This is episode 163, and it's a special one on women pirates. Shimmery timbers! Army meaty. And we might have a very specific idea when we think about pirates. My daughter right now is in love with all things related to Peter Pan. So we see a lot of pirate depictions, and there's the eye patch and the peg leg and the parrot. And the pirates we see are pretty much always men. For a long time, sailors would actually sign a contract prohibiting women from even being on board. But women, creative geniuses that we are, would find ways around this, often dressing as men to sneak on board. From the ancient Mediterranean period through the Middle Ages, we see a handful of women leading ships. Sometimes they pretended to be men, other times they took control completely on their own. Usually this was if they were related to another sea captain or pirate. Maybe it was a husband and they took over after he died. The Norse sagas tell stories of warrior princesses sailing to America even and fighting sea battles. And in the show notes, which I will put up at englandcast.com slash women pirates, I will add a book list where you can dig deeper into women pirates of all periods if that strikes your fancy. But for the purposes of this podcast, we're going to talk about three extraordinary women who sailed the high seas or directed piracy operations in the 16th century. In Ireland, there is a museum to Grace O'Malley, the only museum in the world dedicated to a female mariner. Now, some of you who are Irish might catch me up on the fact that I'm using Grace's name in the anglicized version and not the traditional Irish, which is how she would have known herself. I say her name this way for two reasons. First, she doesn't appear in Irish records, so everything we know about her comes from England. And second, I can't actually pronounce her name in the original Celtic, and I'm not even going to try. But I want to be clear that Grace O'Malley is a name that's given to her. It's not the name that she knew herself as. A few years ago, I did an episode on the English relationship with Ireland, and I'll link to that in the show notes too. But for those of you who need a refresher, Ireland at this point was ruled by a lot of small bands. England was doing its best to bring it under English control in the form of a centralized government based out of Dublin. By the late 16th century, English nobles were building colonies in Ireland to try to take it over and anglicize it. One of the leading families in Ireland was the O'Malley's. They were seafarers, and the legends say that Grace's father was a prominent sailor by 1530 when she was born. Some stories say that she had a brother who didn't want to sail, and so she took over her father's business. Much of what we know about her is legend, but like so many legends, there's likely a bit of truth underneath it somewhere, if only to show her character. So, for example, one early story about her life says that when she was young, there was a group of eagles terrorizing the animals on her land. And to save the livestock, the young Grace ran into the eagles and attacked them, despite the fact that most of them were much bigger than she was. Apparently, this fight with the eagles left her with scars on her forehead that she had for the rest of her life. The head of the family was known simply by his surname, O'Malley. Local folklore had it that when Grace was a young girl, she wanted to go on a trading expedition to Spain with her father. She was told that she couldn't go because she was a girl and that her long hair would catch in the ship's ropes. So she actually cut off most of her hair to embarrass her father into taking her or alternatively to sneak on board. And she became known then as Bald Grace. Grace was educated, something that we know because later in her story, when she met Queen Elizabeth, she spoke Latin with her. She married a fellow called Donal of Flattery, heir to the powerful clan nearby. It was a political marriage. They had two sons and a daughter. And while Donal was the head of the family, he spent much of his time off making war and fighting. So Grace was often left helping to take care of the inhabitants nearby. Donal was killed in a battle in 1565, and Grace vowed to take revenge on the clan that killed him. It was a blood feud. She herself took the castle that Donal had been fighting for, and then when it was clear that she wouldn't inherit the chieftain and would be expected to become a meek widow, she left. She returned home to Clare Island with a group of her husband's men who were still loyal to her. Her leadership grew, and she wound up with a band of around 200 people. She took her father's ships 
and she launched a career on the high seas. She was in her late 30s by this point, so, you know, it's never too old to, to start a new career. She sailed in galley ships with oars on a single sail similar to a Viking longship. She knew the Irish coast like the back of her hand, and she would sail in these very maneuverable ships. She would sail around preying on trading ships coming across. She would take what she wanted, and then she would escape into the small islands and coves along the western Irish coast, where no one would be able to follow her or find her. She married a second time a man called Richard Burke. He had a fleet of trading ships and a fortress called Rockfleet Castle. They had a good working relationship and they had one son. In 1576, an English representative visited their home and Grace pledged her support on behalf of the family. The fact that she did this on behalf of her husband, promising that he would do as she asked him to, led the English to say that she was a notorious woman in all the coasts of Ireland. Sir Henry Sidney knighted Richard before leaving home, and this made Grace Lady Burke. She supposedly gave birth to their son while she was sailing with Richard, and the day after he was born, the ship was attacked by Algerian corsairs. Her men couldn't fight them off. Grace was resting and recovering below from childbirth, which had happened the day before, but she comes up cursing, may you be seven times worse in one year, seeing you can't manage for even one day without me. And she joins in the battle. The Corsairs were so surprised by this woman, looking as if she'd just had a baby, because she had, coming up that it supposedly turned the tide and they won. You can imagine she wanted some serious R&R time after that though, right? She was first captured in 1577 by the Earl of Desmond while she was raiding on his land, and she was sent to Dublin Castle, where she was kept in jail for 18 months. This woman is in her late 40s by this point, right? You guys, this is just kind of amazing. She was released in a bargain to stop her husband rebelling, and then she resumed her piracy nearly 50 years old at this point. The English grew to hate Grace. She stood for everything that the English wanted to subdue in Ireland, and she refused to become this submissive subject. Though the local chieftains respected her, and they did their best to keep her safe, but the English eventually kidnapped two of her sons. One of them died in English custody. So Grace took her case to a female queen, Elizabeth herself. In 1593, she wrote to Elizabeth asking that her other son be released. She was honest about her past, she admitted to her piracy, but she said that it had been necessary for her in order to feed her family and her people. She promised that if Elizabeth would grant them the right to hold their lands under English law, she would devote herself to sailing against Elizabeth's enemies and would answer to Elizabeth directly. Elizabeth found this all very intriguing. She loved the idea of this pirate queen writing to her. She sent questions back to Grace for Grace to answer, and Grace wrote back her answers. She painted a picture of herself as a smart woman. She compared herself to Queen Elizabeth herself. She actually set sail to England with the answers, hoping to meet Elizabeth in person. She wasn't going to trust this to a messenger. This was a really bold move, not just because she was a woman, but also because she was a well-known pirate, and England's ports were filled with bodies of hanged pirates and criminals. But she wanted her son back. By this point, he had been charged with treason, and she knew that if she didn't take action quickly, he would be killed. Grace and Elizabeth met in the autumn of 1593. We don't have an exact recounting of the meeting, but there are plenty of stories about what they wore, who was taller, and apparently one of Elizabeth's ladies offered Grace a lace handkerchief. Grace blew her nose on it and then threw it into the fire, much to the horror of the said lady. The lace was apparently quite expensive. You can just imagine these two women meeting and having this amazing conversation, both of them very intelligent and bold and taking on roles that were very different than what the world expected of their sex. Grace was eventually allowed to return home and her son was freed and she resumed living her life of piracy with Elizabeth's blessings. And in fact, the story ends with the English being required to give Grace a pension, much to their outrage. 